and um, good evening everybody and we welcome you to the next um, uh, you know episode of our master class and today's um, uh, speaker and the topic is very very unique um, you know the today's topic is in pursuit of excellence unleashing the potential in you and your organization and the speaker is a well known international motivator trainer and coach Prof. Uh, uh, Mr. Nick Nikhil Desai. Mr. Nikhil Desai is the director of the Center for Excellence and an international motivator, trainer, and coach. He is passionate about enabling individuals and organizations to unleash their true potential. A powerful presenter with an energetic speaking style, Nikhil inspires and motivates his part. participants to produce lasting change more than a quarter million participants of more than 300 plus cities of 42 countries worldwide and uh, have attended and benefited from mr nikhil desai's programs with excellent feedback he plans and during this decade half a million participants will benefit from his programs worldwide mr nikhil graduated with an mba from usa where he stood first in his university thereafter he worked in new york started as an entrepreneur after returning to india and set up manufacturing facilities and industries in textile and automotive automobile sectors grew from one business to eight businesses in eight years as a sportsman he played cricket with former test and ranji trophy players he was also in the first ever cricket coaching series that was telecast all over india on doordarshan cricket with Uh, Pauli Murugar in 1991 when India liberalized the economy Mr Nikhil Desai established the Center for Excellence which was awarded as the HRN training company of the year by the CEO's organization the CEO's magazine uh, Mr Nikhil Desai also had the honor of receiving the lifetime achievement award at the World HRD Congress in the presence of delegates from all over the world Mr Nikhil was featured in special issue of the human factor on the learning panorama industry best practices revealed with other eminent icons worldwide mr desai is the only speaker and trainer in the world who has the combined strength of an mba from usa business acumen through his own business enterprises a qualified corporate yoga practitioner and has 29 years of experience in conducting motivational sessions and training programs this wealth of experience enables him to share rich ideas and experiences with audiences during his sessions which are very interesting interactive and impactful he has also appeared on television and radio in india new york california philippines south africa and oman mr desai we welcome you to this program and we thank you for sparing time for the participants benefit and in the 5 minute minute interaction which we had before this program i can vouch for it the the enthusiasm and the you know excitement which you exhibit it is contagious look forward to an enriching experience for you sir thank you very much rajesh bhai for a very warm introduction we are 63 participants and that's not bad you know because the time there people say there's zoom fatigue people as you know it's a friday evening people tend to be out right and still we have 63 and growing it's turned to 64 i think that really talks a lot one about the need for this program right and hopefully uh, the good messages that have gone about the kind of work that i have done worldwide so let's move straight to the topic and uh, the topic itself if you break it into two parts it's in pursuit of excellence the first part unleashing the potential in you and then it says and your organization so i'm going to make this very interactive right away how many of you agree that unless you unleash your potential the collective potential of the organization will not get unleashed if you agree right ag in the chat box right now we, we my sessions are always very interactive it's not a one way lecture so right in the chat box ag that first we have to personal excellence is the foundation for professional excellence and personal and professional excellence becomes the foundation for organizational excellence and that is why companies invest so much i mean do i do this flagship program all over the world in person as well as in online i just came back from a 25 
day trip of U.S. conducting this and other programs in seven cities of the U.S. in person, right? So thank you. Thank you for all the quick feedback. And one more thing that I'd like you to do is just write a W, and I'll say this two, three times, that you are in this webinar because, you know, obviously some more people may have registered. They may not have attended. At least I'll get a feel ultimately out of those people who registered who actually attended. So just I will say this because some people will join in later. Just write a W also as we go on. Just W indicates your presence in today's session, right? So let's move on with the first important point. And that is what Henry Ford said. Anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. And it's so important, my friends. And that's why we have people like Pramod Bhai also attending this session. He's crossed 80 also, but he wants to keep his mind young. I tell you, my friends, my oldest participant in an offline program, and that also for a full day, was 85 years old. And at the end of the program, he said, Nikhil, at the fag end of my life, you changed my life. And I told him it was just not me. It was you who were ready to learn. Even at this age of 85, you felt that you could spend a whole day from 9.30 to 5. And it got him results. So I'm glad that all of us are here also learning with the attitude of learning. A little bit about me. A lot has been said by Mr. Rajesh Sharma, but I'm just going to tell you that I don't consider my MBA in USA to be my biggest degree. I give myself a self-bestowed degree, which is LLL. Any guesses in the chat box? What do you think LLL is? Just write in the chat box. What do you think LLL is? What do you think LLL is? Some guesses. Some guesses. What is LLL? What is LLL? In the chat box. Lifelong learner. Lifelong learner. Absolutely. You've got it right. My next question to you is, how many of us sometimes or at least once in your life you have got bored? Write B in the chat box. I'm just writing B. Just not, I'm not got, not that point. But the point is I want you to be honest today. Honesty is the best policy as far as self-improvement is concerned. If you want to really unleash your true potential, you have to be honest. And many of you have honestly written B. And I tell you, my friends, in my 62 years of living, honestly tell you, I have never, ever been bored in life. I've had challenges. I've had difficulties. I've had obstacles. But I have not been bored. Because to get bored, you need time. And I always feel there's so much to do and very little time. So do you think that's good? I want you to write, acknowledge that. Good. That I've never been bored in life. Write that. And I'm going to ask you to do something because I'm encouraging your transformation, right? It's not good for me, but I'm making you the way I work is work with the conscious and subconscious mind. So now that many of you say good, I want to ask you how many of you want to be lifelong learners? Write LLL in the chat box. How many of you, like me, want to be lifelong learners? Write LLL. And if you want to be, and if you commit yourself, the 72 people who are here today, to be lifelong learners, then you will have no time to get bored in life. If nothing else, I always say every hour a person spends with me, they must get at least one powerful idea that can transform their life. At least one, if most people get more. And this is one idea that from today, there is no time for boredom. I'm talking about a time when we didn't have all these smartphones and all these things, you know. At that time also, there was no time to go get bored. Today, we can always learn even from our computer, laptop, smartphone, so many, many things. How many of you agree that today you are ready to throw away boredom from your life forever? No boredom because boredom consumes time. I am ready. Fantastic. Fantastic. Absolutely. So that, my friends, has taken me. That has taken me 30 years now, 42 countries, 2,000 organizations worldwide, and a quarter million participants. As Rajesh Bhai said, I want to take this figure to half a million by the end of the decade, right? Learning Panda was featured, lifetime achievement, showing you some visual parts of the introduction, so I'm not going to get into that. But I believe in what Henry, uh, uh, you know, Bill Gates said, everyone needs a coach, everyone. And that is why people seed at a higher level. There are people who have not only one coach, they have sometimes two, three, four, five coaches in different areas of life. The biggest investment we can make is in ourselves. The biggest investment is not in the financial markets. I want to honestly ask you a question. How many of you are ready to be coached, whether by Nikhil Desa or by anybody else is not the point. I want you to write one-to-one. One-to-one -one means you're ready to be coached. or not. Don't write yes, just write one-to-one. -one. 
because I want some honesty today. By the end of this session, I want to make sure that you have enough matter to think what is it that I'm going to do differently so that I can unleash my true potential. If I could do it by myself, I would have done it. Most of you are 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, but it has not happened because most people need a coach, accountability. Even Sachin Tendulkar needed a coach even after he was making centuries and centuries. We don't. And this is one of the weaknesses, if I may very humbly say, I always say I'm proud to be an Indian. Not only I'm proud to be an Indian, I'm privileged to be an Indian. When I go to abroad, I tell people this. I tell my American audience also, any audience. But I always, as Indians, we also have some weaknesses and we need to accept that. And we believe that we don't need coaches. We don't need to be learning. We don't need to train ourselves. You know, things will happen. I'll manage. It doesn't happen. That. So I'm glad so many of you have been honest, right? In fact, I'm also writing a book, but I'm not getting much time. It's called The Nine Habits of Super Successful People, right? Because a lot of people tell me, so maybe sometime in 2022, it'll be out. We were honored as the company of the year by the CEO magazine and some, some of our clients, some of the best in the world, TCS, British Gas, Cadbury, DHL, Cartier, BSF, Caterpillar, Siemens, right? HSBC, Deloitte, LNT, Dow Chemicals, Capgemini, Pfizer, that's in the news because of the pandemic. So every very super clients only because we make a difference. IBM invited me to do a program for them also online, the US team, right? And that's an honor because they can all call anyone. So let's look at the fundamental concepts of business. 80 people here, please make sure those who have walked in now into the room, please please write W in the chat box so we know that you are present here today. Write W in the chat box, please. I'll say this four or five times. Fundamental concepts of business excellence, first and foremost is, what is it? Visionary leadership. Visionary leadership. And it's not leadership by position. It's leadership by act. I go to many companies and people say, you know, our people, our leaders sometimes don't act like leaders. And somebody who's much lower, junior, they act like leaders. And that's true. So leadership is never about position, action speaks. And one leader whom I like, who transformed GE, was a person known as Jack Welsh. How many of you have heard of Jack Welsh? JW in the chat box. If you've heard of Jack Welsh, write JW in the chat box, right? And some of you may have read some of his, some may not have read. But from one of his books, I saw this lovely 40s and 1P of leadership. And I want some of you to make a guess. Starting with the E's, don't write the P. What do you think are some of the E's that a good leader should have? Write it in the chat box. What are some of the E's that a good leader should have? What are some of the E's? Energy, Sanjay says. Good. What else? What else? Empathy. All right. Empathy. Enthusiasm. Empower. Okay. Energy and edge. Good. Harmony. All right. Experience. Positivity. Well, positivity is not P. And I don't want you to do the P right now. We just finished the E's. All right. Engage. Right. So good answers, right? Some of them are right. And there's no right and wrong. You're just matching with, uh, with uh, what you call Jack Welch's answers. So the first one he says is, I want people who have tremendous personal energy. And, you know, people ask me, Nikhil, at 62, you have this much energy. You run so many sessions. And yet you feel and you exude. And we can feel that energy even if we are in an online session. And I say, yes, if I'm not energetic, how will I make my, trans my participants be energetic? Because we want, as Jack Well said, not only people who energize themselves, they should be able to energize their teams. They should be able to energize others. There's no point in having great, being great solo performers if we can't energize our teams. Edge, someone with a competitive edge and a will to win. Most of us are working in for-profit organizations. And the bottom line and top line is important. And therefore, having a track record of getting results, not just activity, but productivity is critical. Execution no. is more important than planning. Huh? A lot of us are very, very good at planning. But when it comes to execution, we sort of fail. And that's the reason I would request you to ensure that we look at these four S, four E's, huh? and also the one P, which is passion. A deep passion for work and for life. He says, I just want one people who are passionate about their personal okay. life and not passionate about their work and vice versa. So I don't want people who are just passionate about their personal life, not passionate. That balance is going to be very, very good. So continuous improvement and innovation. Now, what phone do you see here? Obviously, you see a Nokia phone. How many of you are using a Nokia phone right now? Right, NOK, 85 participants. How many of you are using a Nokia phone? Right, NOK in the chat box. Right, NOK in the chat box. If you are using 
uh, Nokia phone? Anyone? And the answer probably is none. Maybe one, maybe zero. Average, when I ask this question, I get 1% at the most. And here it is zero. Why? If you remember the time in the beginning, the smartphones, Nokia was number one. It commanded more than 90% of the market. And today, it's not existent in the smartphone space. The Samsungs and the Apples have taken over. Why? Because they did not innovate like the Apples and the Samsungs did. Now, many of you may not be producing products like the Apple, but where can you innovate? You can always innovate in the way you are doing your day-to-day -day things, whether in your personal life, whether in your professional life. You can do things differently. Albert Einstein had said, if you keep doing things the way you are doing, you'll keep getting the same results you were getting. You want different results. You have to learn to do things differently. And it involves some risk. But if you don't take calculated risk, my friends, you can't unleash your book. And therefore, innovation and improvement in everything that you do. Keep on looking at a better way of doing things. Results orientation, very critical. A game of basketball is no fun unless you have a goal post. Most of us know smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-bound. But how many of us follow that? We must make sure that all our goals are smart. We are Time bound is very important if you want to unleash potential in a faster pace. You have to keep deadline driven goals because all your dreams are nothing if they don't have deadline. I always say a goal is a dream with a deadline. So many of us have goals. We think we have goals, but they're only dreams and wishes. Only when you put a deadline to it, does it become smart. Customer delight is so critical. There was a time when we used to talk of customer satisfaction. Companies used to do customer satisfaction audits. Those days are gone, my friend. I say, if you do not satisfy your customer, you will die. If you satisfy your customer, you will survive. But only if you delight your customer, will you thrive. Remember this, if you do not satisfy your customer, you will die as an organization. If you satisfy your customer, you will somehow survive. But satisfaction is not enough if you want to thrive. As an organization, we must always look at ways to delight the customer. Now, some of you may not be in directly interfacing with the customer, but your internal customer is also as important as you. And sometimes we do not delight our internal customer, our colleagues, our team members. As a result, they become a bottleneck is created and they can't delight the extra. So very important, we must look at ways and means to delight the customer. I created a model which I call the soft West model because studies by Harvard University showed that 85% of an executive's success as work is due to soft skills, only 15% due to technical skills. And today, so many companies honestly tell me, Nikhil, we spend a lot of money on functional and technical training. We hardly spend that much money. It's reverse. 15% on soft skills, 85% technical and functional. I did a program in San Francisco for the US Coast Guard. And the training officer, very senior person, they call training officer, but like a training head. And her, her, her feedback is on our website. She says, Nikhil, your session on stress management was so beautiful. We lead something like this. We keep on doing our refresher training and, you know, things like that. But we need programs on the softer area. And that became so critical. I mean, they do it, but they're not doing enough. So I created a model, which I call the West model, where V stands for vision, E for enthusiasm, S for stress mastery, and therefore more energy. And T for and many people who after they attend this program, whether it's a one hour online program, a half day offline program, or a full day offline program, they say, Nikhil, your West is the best because it covers what is really needed for us to unleash. So I'm going to start with each of these four pillars of this trademark program, starting with West. 92 participants. My request is those who have come in a little late, please write W in the webinar indicating your presence in the webinar. Okay. V for vision. I'm not talking about binocular vision. What am I talking about? The vision to see yourself one year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, and then connecting your today with your tomorrow, with that vision, your activities, your goals, are they in line with that vision or not? Is a very critical question we have to ask ourselves on a very frequent basis. How many of you have been part of like an athlete, right? A-T-H in the chat box. So I know that you ever run a 100 meter, 200 meter race as an athlete. I used to be a, a, a sprinter also. I ran with the fastest man in India. We are part of the same relay team. He went to India to represent India in the Moscow Olympics. I was not as good, so I could not go. But it was honor to be part of that same relay team. 
And what happens in the relay? If you exchange the baton with the other person outside the baton zone, you get disqualified. Even you're running your own 100 meter race, you run outside the track, you get disqualified. Similarly, if you don't connect your today with your vision of tomorrow, you get disqualified from achieving that vision that you set for yourself. Keeping yourself on track is very, very. I loved one philosopher's answer. When somebody asked him, what is the size of the sky? He in turn reflected the question back and asked the audience, you tell me what is the size of the sky? And somebody said big, somebody said huge, somebody said infinite, somebody said whatever, different answer. And then he said, all your answers are partly right. But the size of the sky depends on the size of the window through which you are looking at them. And that I thought was a beautiful answer because if our vision is small, we can only see that portion of the sky, that portion of life, that portion of our potential. But if we expand our vision, there's much more that is possible. A quarter million participants to half a million participants, not easy, but that's the size of my vision. And I know every time I meet one person, at least 10 other people are indirectly impacted. So half a million into 10 is 10, 5 billion people impacted just because something I shared is very fulfilling. What is it that you want as part of your vision? Let's give me two examples of non-visionaries, one a company, one an individual. 146 years ago, This telephone has too many shortcomings to be seriously considered as a means of communication. The device is inherently of no value to us. Who said this? Western Union internal memo. And it required visionaries beyond this non-visionary statement to work on the phones that today we have smartphones and many of you have logged on to this session on a smartphone. If that non-visionary statement was allowed to be true, the world would not have made progress. I remember going to the US with, you know, at that time, India had a rotary dialer. And I went there and went to my rented apartment, went to an AT&T store, picked up a colorful push button phone and just plugged in and it was started to work. It was beautiful. We used to have so much challenges in India at that time. But that's fine. Television won't be able to hold on to any market it captures after the first six months. People will soon get tired of staring at a plywood box every night. A movie producer in the US said this when television first came. He said, you think people are going to sit and stare at a plywood box? No way. How wrong he was. Today, we have more than a thousand channels. Cinemas, now only because of multiplexes, are surviving. And of course, in the pandemic, had a difficulty. But before that, those last cinema halls are all gone. But I love the HR vision of Intel. It's just not what we make. It's what we make possible. Great minds, big hearts, collaborating to make history. What a beautiful. Too many companies have great minds, but small hearts. Too many companies have small minds and big heart. But the deadly combination is great mind and big heart. When we expand both in our organization and make history, we all can do more. We all can reach new horizons and greater heights. I want all of us in the chat box to write WCDM, which stands for we can do more. WCDM, we can do more. We can do more. We can do more do more. I'd once done a program in Muscat for a bank and the whole focus of that program was just more, more. They said with the same resources, we don't want to recruit more people. Can we do more? And we talked about so many things that made that possible. Great. So in 2022, what will you and your team do? I want a few answers. Two, three minutes I'm going to give you in the chat box. Write, what will you do? Maybe, what will your team do? Maybe, what will your organization will do? Whatever you think. In the two minutes, just As an exercise, small activity, I want you to write. Give you a small example. On a personal level, somebody may say, I want to stop smoking. Somebody may say, I want to start, start learning more. Somebody might say, I want to continue uh, my projects. Somebody might say, I want to complete all my targets. Just a quick example. Whatever you want to write. Example, stop procrastinating. Start exercising. Whatever. Write, which will help you move towards your goals a little better. Write whatever comes to your mind, right? Write the word stop or start and write. I'm giving you two minutes while I have a sip of water. Go ahead. Okay. So I see some answers here. More focused on goals. Create a new HR business model like the team to sharpen their focus. Expand my horizon. Beautiful. Plan for action. Excelling at at least one skill. Initiative with empowering. Wonderful. To incorporate my firm. Great. Want to build high-performing team, Rajesh. Wonderful. Great. I want to complete my all projects and implement in Praveen. Good. 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 Lovely answers. So uh, I want my students industry ready. Good. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Great. So I'm seeing performance with excellence. Okay. One last person will take, right? In increase my focus and complete my projects in time. Great. Great. So I call this activity, what I call is the SSCC activity. Just created by me, but we can do it better and better. Alka, I'll do better for my college students. Great. And what you do for your students is going to impact their career. So it's a great decision you're taking. Great. Fantastic. So let's move on, right? Enthusiasm. B was for vision. E is for enthusiasm. Arz karta hu. Zindagi khub surat hai. Zindagi khub surat hai. Hame jina nahi aya. Zindagi khub surat hai. Hame jina nahi aya. Nasha har cheez mein hai. Hame peena nahi aya. Kaustub says, wa. Wa kya khub kaha. This is the reality. This is the reality. Life is always beautiful. We don't know how to live it. There is intoxication in everything. We don't know how to imbibe it. Even your challenges have intoxication. Even your problems have intoxication. And if this we have every day, we don't need the other intex. Vinay Khattar says one, one time more, sir. Okay. Zindagi khub surat hai. Zindagi khub surat hai. Hame jina nahi aya. Zindagi khub surat hai, hume jina nahi aya, nasha har cheez mein hai, hume peena nahi. Once we know this nasha, we get this, life just becomes wonderful. So, let's move to the next point, which is attitude. Enthusiasm affects your attitude. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than success, than what other people think, say or do. It will make or break a company or a home. More divorces occur because of the attitude of one or both of the partners. More companies go bankrupt because either the management or the staff not having a great attitude. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace. For. I always say every day in the morning we have two choices. We can say, good morning, God. Or we can say, oh God, it's morning. Same almost little shift of words. Good morning, God. Or, oh God, it's and that determines your day. The way you live your day determines your week. And the weeks determine your months. And your months determine your years. And your years determine. Every day, my friends, there are three things I do every day in the morning when I get up while I'm still in my bed. And I encourage you to do one, two, or all three of them. The first thing is for a few seconds, get up and just smile. No reason. Just smile. As you sit up, instead of feeling, you know, wow, I'm tired, I still need to snooze, the alarm, just get up and smile. It changes your inner vibration and climate. We can't control our outer climate. We can always be controlling our inner climate. CC is not carbon copy. CC is climate controller. And I want all of you, my friends, to be your own climate controllers, irrespective of what happens. So first thing. Second is to thank God for giving me one more day to make a difference in people's lives. Because I know when I got up in the morning, a quarter million people in the world did not get up. You know what I mean. And the third is a decision and a reconfirmation that whatever happens today in my life, I will not lose my calm center. Whatever happens, I will not lose. Koi bhi vyakti ya paristiti meri muskan chin nahi sakti hai. If you can get that, you'll see how much energy you'll have. How much flowing of much positivity. I'm convinced that life is 10% what happens. So it is with you. We are in charge of our attitude. We are. Of our... Let me give you one story of a person known as Thomas Alva Edison. And most of us know his story. What was his story? We know that he failed. Some people say 1000 times. Some say 10,000 times before he invented the light. And people used to ask him, Mr. Edison, why do you continue doing this? The light bulb is not working. He said, I know now thousand ways in which the light bulb doesn't work. That's a small story. The bigger story that most people don't know is that when he was 67 years old, his entire manufacturing facility and research facility in Edison, New Jersey caught fire. And he told his son, go and quickly call your mother. She'll have never seen a fire like this. In a Reporters came and said, Mr. Edison, all your work is now burned to ashes. And he gave a reply smiling. He says, no, all my now my mistakes are burnt out. I will do more in the next 33 years of my life than what I have done in my first 67 years. He wanted to live to be 100. Nobody has a goal. Nobody has control over how long you can live. But most of us, if we have a goal to live longer and we do what we have to do with our health, 
the chances are we'll love, live long. Till 84, he lived 17 more years after that accident. But even till the last year of his life, he had a new patent to his name. That was Thomas Alva Edison holding the record for the highest number of patents in the history of mankind. My friends, even I have a vision. 30 years I've completed in my profession. I want to do this work for at least, I want to finish complete 50 years in my profession. What is it, the vision that you have? What is the attitude you carry? You need to ask. The next point is stress. Are stress levels rising worldwide? Most people say yes. What's the relationship between stress and performance? When stress is very low, performance is also very low. Then you have what is called this chalta hai attitude. Performance is low because stress is low. Carefree attitude. When stress increases, performance improves. But only up, that's why deadlines and targets are important. But only up to a certain extent. After that, if stress increases more, performance goes down. Not only performance goes down, something else will also get impacted. Tell me if you don't manage your stress well, what will you happen to your life? Go ahead. What will happen if you don't manage your stress? British gas flies me by helicopter. Used to fly, now it's pandemic and taken over by shell. To run two hour stress management programs in their offshore platform. They spend a bomb every time on my, such a big amount on my helicopter ride besides my fees. Burnout, health issues. What else will happen? What else will happen in your life? Mental issues. What else will happen? Distress, mental and physical, sleep disorders. Absolutely, all this is true. Frustration, chaos everywhere. Yes, your answers are right. All of them get bucketed into four parts. First and foremost, it affects productive. Second is what many of you said, it affects health. Third, it drains energy. There are times when you've not done much and yet you are very energetic. Why? Because that day you didn't have much stress. But the day you had stress, you did very little and you were drained out. And finally, it strains relation. More problems occur because of stress, either of one or the, both the partners, whether work relationships, home relationships, or where. But I'm going to focus on this health because this, I believe, is one of the foundations, again, of X. And I want to know from you, what is your definition of health? What is your definition of health? While you're writing the definition, anybody else who has walked into the webinar late, please write W in the webinar indicating your presence. What is your definition of health? I want in the chat box. Free state of mind. Free state of mind. Good food and peaceful mind. What else? What else is your definition of health? A good balance of physical and mental well-being. Sound body, happy mind. Positivity. Good sleep. Good. So good answers. But as you know, Nikhil Desai doesn't like only simple answers. Mani Prasad. Good. Physical, mental health. So I'm going to take you to my definition of health. Health is just not murti well-being. It is a jubilant feeling of well-being. Higher level than just well-being. Jubilant feeling of well-being at the physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual levels. Five dimensions of health. We are made up of five elements. We want to live a five-star life. We have to focus on all five elements for holistic health. Be honest and tell me how many of us have some aches and pains in our body. Write P in the chat box if you have. Uh, if you write P in the chat box, please write like this P. Write P in the chat box if you have. Be honest. Be honest. How many of us? I'm going to write M now. And you can write P later also. Right? How many of us? I'm writing N just to guide you. It's not my issue, but I'm just... How many of us find that our mental focus is a little less than we would like it to be? We get distracted more often. Be honest and write M. Be honest and write M. We get distracted. Thank you for your honesty, my friends. My next question is, how many of you sometimes get upset, irritated, angry faster than you'd like to? Write E in the chat box. How many of us feel we get upset, angry, irritated faster than we'd like to? Good. Emotional health needs. S. How many of us have at least one person in our life whom we do not get along well with? Not only do we not get along, if that person just walks into our life, we feel very undisturbed, disturbed. Physically, forget physically, even if that person just you think about that person, you feel somewhat disturbed, right? Yes, in the chat box. Thank you for the honesty. And finally, my friends, if you have never thought of being a spiritual person, be honest, write SP in the chat box. If you never thought of being a spiritual person, I'm not talking religious person. If you have never thought of being a what is spirituality, we'll see when we are 70, 80, 90 years old. Spirituality is not for the young. Be honest. Thank you. For me, my friends, honest spirituality is a very, very simple. It is not to do with religion. We are all from Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Christians, 
And what is spirituality? For me, my definition of spirituality, if you're living in the present tense, but I want an honest answer. How many of us, instead of being living in the present tense, we live tense in the present, right? TV in the chat box. How many of us, instead of living in the present tense, we live tense in the present, right? TV, our mind is wandering. We are restless. And the more we are restless, we cannot be in the present moment. We are moving away from our true spiritual nature. If you look at the present moment, it is the only gift that we have. It is the only gift that we have. That is why it is called the present. Present is a gift, but because of restlessness. If you know present is also now, the moment, now. If you reverse now, what do you get? Right in the chat box. When you reverse now, what do you get? Right in the chat box. What do you get? One, you win in life because you are living in the present. How many of you like my definition of health? Right, health in the chat box. Jubilant feeling of well-being at the physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual level. How many of you are ready to drop the hatred that you have towards one person? Right, drop in the chat box. Only one person. Identify that person mentally and say, I am ready to drop that hatred I have. And tell me, my friends, if you drop that hatred, will you feel H for heavier or L for lighter? Will you feel H for heavier or L for lighter? And if you feel lighter, you will unleash your potential more easier. Just try it out. You don't have to love that person, but just drop the hatred towards them. Opposite of love is not hate. Opposite of love is not love. I don't mind. Don't love that person. That person has done something wrong with you. But at least let go of the hate. Thank you for all the beautiful answers and your commitment to make some difference. Laughter is the best medicine. We have a separate program, which we call it, which is Achieving Excellence or Stress Management, the one I used to do for British Gas, which I do even, as I said, the US Coast got lots of things. We do lots of and discuss that at another time. But I want to only share with you one quick, powerful de-stressor, and that's laughter. I want all of you, either you can stand or you can sit. I'm going to do one demo. I'm going to do one demo. You will not do anything that time. You just look at me. Okay. And after that, you will do it five times with me. Most people say laughter is great, but I can't laugh at home. I can't laugh in office. Home, I can't laugh because my husband doesn't like it. Wife doesn't like it. My neighbors don't like it. My in-laws don't like it. So I have created one laughter, which I'm going to demonstrate with you now. It is called silent laughter. And we are going to laugh, you know, after my one demo. And you can do this every day in the bathroom when you have a bath. Nobody will know outside. So demo, don't do it. Just see what I'm doing. Breathe in. This is one round. What's happening? Face is getting, all the blood is coming here. What is happening to the stomach? The stomach is going in. What is happening to the hands? They are moving from left and right. One round. I will count five. We'll do it together. Not loudly. Do it silently. Round number one. One. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Four. <laughs> five. <laughs> Eyes closed. Left hand on your chest. Observe your breathing. Feel the heartbeat. Feel the flow of pranic energy to every cell of your body. Breathe in and breathe out. No movement of the body. No movement of the mind. You're feeling relaxed physically. You're feeling energized mentally. And you are at peace with yourself. And now you're in the present moment. There's no past. There's no future. You're just enjoying this blissful moment. This is the state in which we perform at our best. Get in touch with this feeling on a regular basis. Smile more often. Laugh more often. Be sincere in life. Never be serious in life. Seriousness is boring, dull and dry. Sincerity has the element of seriousness to get the work done. But it is still fun and joy. That is important. My friends, if you felt good, write FG in the chat box. After this activity, if you felt good, write FG in the chat box. FG for felt good. Felt good. Look at the rapid way in which the numbers are coming. Everybody felt good. And if you felt good, my friends, should you do it or not? Yes, you should. And as I said, if you have any issues of somebody else not liking it, do it in the bathroom. Do it silently, but energize. So V for vision, E for enthusiasm, S for stress, mastery, and T is for trust. Trust in yourself, self-confidence. Many of us have heard this acronym of team. I want a couple of you to write this acronym. What does team mean? What does team mean? Thank you, Mr. Murthy. Thank you for your comments, right? I can understand that you're already getting so much value that it you want to just share it immediately and I appreciate it. Very exciting. Together. Okay, great, great. All right. So go ahead. What does team mean? Together, everyone achieves more, Sanjay. Yes. That is something that most of us know. 
Most of us know together everyone achieves more. But as you know, Nikhil Desai is not somebody who gets satisfied with more. So I created a little bit different and I said, together everyone achieves miracles. Miracles is much more than more. And that is what teamwork is possible. More inspiring high performance. I started with Henry Ford. I will end this. I'll leave enough time for QA. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress and working together is. So just want to quickly let you know, what do we do as an organization? What do we offer? We offer one-to-one coaching, as you know. We do power-packed online and more offline motivational programs like this one. We do in-house programs for corporates and we do train-the-trainer programs, which you know people want to be trainers, either for themselves, just to spread things to society, whatever may be. So before you end, I would just, if you like you to write, you know, some of you have already written one-to-one in the chat box. But if you think you want uh, to consider or explore any possibility of doing a power pack motivational program for your company, then write PMP in the chat box. That's a short code, PMP. Just write it there so that my team will know, uh, either for your institution, for your company, power pack motivational program is PMP. Okay, just write PMP, not PMP. If you ever, if you think you want to do any anyone, to, yeah, you can write one-to-one also with it. If you want anybody, you know, you're from a corporate, you want something to happen for your company to take the company and your people to the next level. I just yesterday, this morning spoke to somebody. He said, it's my commitment, responsibility towards my people. I've heard you now. I want to make sure that my 400 people all get trained by you, motivated. So just write, if you wish. I mean, no commitment right now, just because, you know, ultimately it's all about making sure that what we can do good, we spread it. So INH is in-house programs. If you want something for your company to explore, write INH. If you are a decision maker, if you can do something for you, okay, INH. And finally, the TTT is if you ever want to be a trainer, you think either for yourself, for your own company, or just to spread good things to society, be a good speaker, good trainer. So I write TTT in the chat. And you can always ping this later on also. It doesn't have to be right away right? If you want to. So you can take a snapshot. We're going to close this very soon now in terms of just the ending the session. So Q&A can start and you can take it. You can WhatsApp me and I'm completely fine. You can email me, whatever works for you. You can visit our website and you will have all the information about, right? So I leave this on. And uh, uh, one of the things we should do is we should take a screenshot of all the participants. We are about 80 participants. Before. Yeah, thank you very much. And if there are no other questions, then I must say that we come to an end of the session. And thank you very much, sir, for uh, spending time. And um, uh, as we see in the chat box, how interestingly people have taken the uh, you know takeaways from your session. I am sure they would implement it in their real life. And uh, also, they will be uh, putting it into the practice. So thank you very much for this session. I thank all our past presidents and executive members who have attended our president. Uh, Dr. Kavita Lagate and uh, our uh, BMS staff who keeps on working very, very rigorously uh, behind the scene and making every session a success. So thank you very much and look forward to meeting you again. <laughs> yes, so now, now let me just sir, quickly, you are Kavita, not only in the- Kavita took this initiative and I must congratulate her at this, your president. I don't know if she's here right now, Kavita. She's there. She's okay. there. So, Kavita, you should say a few words. And uh, yes, the team, yes, Lakshmi, Andrela, and all have been doing a wonderful job. And uh, Rajesh Bhai, as the incoming president, my best wishes to you. 